All right, guys. How's everybody doing today? God bless all of you. Let's get into it, man. Proverbs 6. I want to pray first. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord, and I want to ask you to continue to bless me as you have already blessed me, Lord. I want you to show me what it is that I can do for you today, Lord, and then help me to do it in a way that glorifies you, Lord. Help me to lift your name up, cast my name down. Help me to take your word, Lord, and send it to all of these people in the way that you would want, Lord, that they may receive it, that it may nourish them, that I may be nourished in sharing your word, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Proverbs 6. <clears throat> Dangerous promises is the heading of this section. My son, if you become surety for your friend, if you have shaken hands and pledged for a stranger, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, and deliver yourself. For you have come into the hand of your friend. Go and humble yourself. Plead with your friend. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which, having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eyes, he shuffles his feet, he points with his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually, he sows discord. Therefore his calamity shall come suddenly, suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. My son, keep your father's command, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart, tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of a seductress, do not lust after her beauty in your heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. For by means of a harlot a man is reduced to a crust of bread, and an adulteress will prey upon his precious life. Can a man take fire to his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one walk on hot coals, and his feet not be seared? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife, whoever touches her shall not be innocent. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving, yet when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. Whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. Wounds and dishonor he will get, and his reproach will not be wiped away. For jealousy is a husband's fury, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not accept no recompense. Nor will he be appeased, though you may give many gifts. All right, guys. So, first things first. I'm going to do a video coming up strictly on repentance, and I wanted to talk about something really quick because we're coming up on Easter. I mean, it's always important, but it just feels like something I should talk about. So, we're going to get into the difference between attrition and contrition. You know, attrition is asking for forgiveness at the face of it all, but not really meaning it, only just worried about the right now. Whereas contrition is true godly forgiveness. You know, it's repentance in a godly way. It's wanting to turn away from sin. So I'm going to get a little more into that, maybe in another video coming up if anyone is interested. So back to today. 6.22, it says, When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. Wisdom is totally comprehensive in its nature, and that's what I like about this, because it says when you roam, when you sleep, or when you wake. So when you roam, that's when you're out in the world. When you sleep, you're at home. And when you wake up, you're at home. So it's basically everywhere, all the time. 625. Do not lust after beauty in her heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. So we can't let lust 
lust in our hearts can lead to sin so quickly, guys. I want to share another scripture with you. It's Matthew somewhere. Hold on one second. Matthew, and I think this is in Matthew 5, guys. I want to say towards the end. Matthew 5, 28. But I say, to, I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And we know that God weighs the heart of things. He weighs the intent of things. So we have to be careful with that. Because when you say, gosh dang it, out loud, but in your mind you meant the other thing, you might as well have said the other thing because God knows. Don't for one second think that you can trick him. You know, guys, I mean, that's so insulting to him, and we all do that. I've done that. You know, it's like when you go into a room and you close the door, even there's nobody at home to do something that you probably shouldn't be doing. Like that somehow is going to stop God from knowing what you're doing. You know, or people will say something like, you shouldn't do that. You're at a church. Well, it doesn't really matter where you're at. God sees it, guys. One more thing. 626 says, For by means of a harlot, a man is reduced to a crust of bread, and an adulteress will prey upon his precious life. Consorting with prostitutes is self-destructive, but adultery is worse still, guys. Because not only does it violate the covenant of marriage, but it's direct assault upon it. You're not saying... When you're in a marriage and you're, you're caught cheating with someone, you're not saying... I don't want to be married. You're saying, I don't want to be married to you. I don't want you as the wife that I have. I want this woman. So you're not only just being, you know, it's not only a, a breach of the marriage contract, but it's like it's a direct assault upon it because nobody seems to take that serious anymore. And that's an oath. It's just like any other oath. We all get so mad when the president doesn't do something that we feel like, you know, we say, hey, he took an oath. Why isn't he doing these things? You know what I mean? But how many of us out there have been in a marriage or something like that and just absolutely didn't do the things that we said, you know, through through sickness and health, through rich or poor, or, you know, through thick and thin. But it's not because there's so many divorces. And um, I don't know, I feel like I kind of got off on a tangent there and I didn't necessarily want to do that, but maybe somebody needed to hear it. All I know is this, guys. Easter's coming up. God is amazing. You know what I mean? Go out there, do something for him, guys. It makes you feel so good. I love you guys for listening to me when I talk about it. And I want to hear from you guys, too. Let us all just spread and share the word of God. He is so amazing. I love each and every one of you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.